All right. Uh, before I die, Don, I mean, I should probably dispel this notion, this um, propaganda uh, to the point it's become a, a value system. Because if I don't point this out and then I get hit by a truck, I'd be, ah, I should have. I'd be there on my deathbed if I only if I only warned him. <sighs> Filming a video with blood spurting out. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of movies where people get stabbed in the necks and just gargle. I'm like, okay, is that, is that the new grossness thing in Hollywood? Anyway, wanted to convey this because this is something I wish I knew when I was younger. And since my audience leans a little bit younger because you're younger guys and some gals like leading in. <clears throat> Let me save you a whole lot of pain and frustration and agony. And above and and not in addition to and envy because your pain, frustration, and anger comes from envy so let me get rid of this envy let me dispel this notion to you and then you your life is just going to be a lot better it ain't going to be richer although it might uh but you're certainly not going to be poor you'll be poor no mo it's just my goal i'm not here to make you rich i'm just here to get you out of poverty that's all <clears throat> and make your life a little bit easier let's let's save you this frustration right now this is not an Alex Jones conspiracy theory. This is an, oh, they're doing witchcraft at the Fed. They're sacrificing goats. That's not, this is 100% true. If you go back and look at the value system, society taught you, op programmed into your mind, the operating system, the value system by which you live your life, all right, you go back and realize that it's been one of materialism. Now, maybe your parents tried to tell you otherwise. Maybe you said maybe there was a teacher, but generally speaking, I'm throwing teachers and parents in this loop because very few parents even know this, and very few Americans know this. But if you look back at it, they taught you one of a materialist value system. Okay. And the way you could tell that is you say, what do you want out of life? What do you want right now? Like if you could come up with a list of what you wanted right now, it would be a list of things and not mental states. Like what do I want? I want contentment. I want peace. Yes, Coach Greg Adams, that what he want? Because he old like me. He old. Rrr, the pencil skirts in the day. <laughs> but he asked most other people who aren't, you know, IQ 120 plus, philosophers plus. What do you want? It's always stuff and things. And, and if you go back to like when you're young, it starts right off the bat. It starts before you're even in school. The, I watch my nieces, the YouTube. Oh, there's advertisements. Like anytime there's a screen here, you need this thing. You need this bobble. You need this stuff, which has kind of always been a little bit. I expect that out of corporations. They're trying to sell you things. But then you go into school. And when you get to school, what is it? It's being popular. Essentially, who has the highest status? Are you with the popular kids? Now, I don't know what it is today. Perhaps the popular kids are the ones who like, oh my God, I care about the poor, starving minorities and the Africans and the children and the Japanese just so, so much. <clears throat> I don't know what fake, uh, maybe it's virtue signaling, but whatever it is, there is a hierarchy. There is a pecking order that forms where there's the really popular kids. And shucks, how do you want to be a popular kid, don't you? And what that is is status. Now, usually what comes in combination with status is things. Why things? Well, because you're in school. You don't have a job. I, and I know this is still happening because I had a client, if, <clears throat> high school kid. He was from the Wiseze. He felt bad because all the other kids, now keep in mind, not one of these kids have a job. Why is that is the, the richest part of Minnesota? It's, it's the most snobby part. You just like, oh man, look at all the punchable faces. <laughs> look, look at all the blue bloods who just inherited wealth. You all look like the president of Canada. <clears throat> and he was upset because he didn't have as nice a car as the other kid. I didn't have a car in high school. Took the bus or biked occasionally. And I'm like, that isn't the kids' cars. That's their parents who paid for the, the Beamer or the Mercedes, legit. What was it? Is it Green Mile? No, Green Mile. What, what, Gross Point. Gross Point blank. Well, that's the movie. Gross Point is Michigan. Winnetka and Chicago. Every, every town's got their prestigious little place where the rich kids' parents buy the cars. But like, oh, I'd really like to. And like, 
well, one, just another argument for to get out of the public schools and homeschool yourself and teach yourself and, and get a, get your high school diploma by 16 and get out of that environment. <clears throat> but already you're establishing that materialism and stat and the status it conveys is the ultimate most important thing. Why? Well, if you want to give it some, uh, uh, what's the, not forensic, what's the word? Intrinsic. If you want to give status intrinsic value, well, it would get you the girls, it would get you laid. That's ultimately what it was. So the popular and the hottest girls got whoever had the highest status through whatever means, material, sometimes legitimately, like you're a very good athlete. Okay, you work for that. They would give up the poon to that guy or those guys. And those guys would often have the fancy shirts or whatever else like that. <clears throat> now, I hated school so much. Like you, you, like you see me. If, oh, I recognize him from high school. You better go the other way. You and I are not friends. <laughs> my teacher, my teacher ever recognize if I, there's only three three teachers I like. The rest of you swim to China in in Minecraft with the cinder block around your belt. But I couldn't wait to get out. And when I got to college, I didn't have time. I was working too much. Didn't have time to worry about the popularity contests and all that. <clears throat> and more or less was stuck in a lower and middle income existence to, to the point. And, and I didn't hang out with social circle friends or go on yachts or anything like that. <clears throat> so I didn't, never was part of my life. That status of materialism was never part of the life. And I thought, nah, my generation's different. We had we had grunge. It was cool to shop at Regstock. Ironically, though, that made you have status. That was what the popular kids were doing. So I'm too busy with my life, living in basements, trying to get by, try to stop a housing crisis. You can look up my record. So I didn't know what was going on. And then, how do I want to angle this? <clears throat> it wasn't until... The first time I saw it, let's do it chronologically. When I started to finally get some traction in banking where I was a credit analyst, working in a prestigious neighborhood of the Twin Cities, did I start to realize that roughly my generation, a little bit older at this time, I was in my late 20s, early 30s, that people who are in their 30s, 40s, and their 50s, sometimes their 60s, and even their 70s, we're still playing this stupid status game that I thought we all left in middle school or certainly high school. And I could see it on their income statements and their loan applications, not to bore you with the details. So I was an analyst. Someone comes in for a loan. You got to give me your tax returns, income statements, balance sheets, all your financial data. I do this thing called underwriting. I crunch some numbers and using some rather simple mathematical formulas. You just calculate how much can this person afford to pay back? What is the likelihood they're going to pay us back? <clears throat> and then I give it a rating, you know, not to one like A, B, C, D, F. Uh, and then we, we would lend to the person or not, depending on what my underwriting did. Now, I was what was called a commercial underwriter, commercial analyst, meaning I would analyze this personal, like individual people. Those are usually mortgage brokers. They look at your loan, your credit card, mortgage, car loan, that kind of thing. They look at the individual I was a business analyst. I would look at the businesses and because the individuals usually would guarantee the business loans, the personal side. So I did both. I could analyze individuals. I could analyze companies. And when I looked at these businessmen, these business bros, these successful rich guys, I realized one thing. This is over a 15-year period of a career, guys, okay? <clears throat> Behind the scenes, thousands, thousands of tax returns, thousands of balance sheets. You know what? Not a single one of them except two were legitimately rich. Now, I've talked about this a lot before. And if you really want to, you go read my book, Behind the Housing Crash, where I, I, I these are real characters. Of course, I changed the names of some other variables that are unidentify, unidentifiable. But the <clears throat> egregious, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a disgusting level of display of wealth. Um, someone, someone's got it right now. I, I, I can't, the amount of BS, the amount of wealth they tried to display, how awesome they were. When I knew for a fact they were insolvent, they had, they had more debts than they had assets. Their banks or their monies, or the, their companies were losing money. These guys, if, <clears throat> if the bank didn't extend a loan, they'd have to file for bankruptcy. 
And this was in a prestigious part of town, the whole state, frankly. And, and I realized something. When I was growing up poor, and, 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 and when grow up, I also mean teens and 20s. When I was like living in basements, trying to get by, trying to get, you know, oh, you're self-employed. We can't account that income. So we got to give you an extra high percentage loan on your, on your duplex. I always envied, logically, these guys, not so much in high school and middle school, though naturally I guess that, but more so as an adult, young adult, I always envied these guys who had BMWs and Mercedes because I thought they got money. They're wealthy. They're rich. And it wasn't until I got to peek behind the curtain and realized just how few of these people were actually wealthy and were actually rich Relative to the amount of dudes who were just borrowing other people's money, guaranteed by the taxpayer inevitably, to go and make believe and, and act to LARP as one. And there's one called Zorba the Swede. That's even the title of a chapter in that book. Zorba the Swede. I'll give you an example. Swedish. All right, Swede. Minnesota's mostly Swedish, Scandinavian type of self-loathing people. <clears throat> and this guy, his name wasn't Zorba. And he wasn't Greek. But I remember him because he came in one time with a medallion in his gray chest hair. These standard fat, like imagine a fat Greek sitting on the Mediterranean island, all sweaty, all oily. That was this guy, but he wasn't Greek. He was Scandinavian because <clears throat> I knew his last name. And he had a medallion as if this is the 1970s. He's a pimp in New York driving some super donk. Had a cane. He didn't have a cane, but he might as well. <clears throat> shirt unbuttoned down in there. And all this guy wanted to talk about was his, his boat on Lake Minnetonka and all these hot waitresses chicks he was hitting on. And hey, you should come down to Lake Havasu. And all I wanted was this guy's like past two years of tax returns because I can't analyze a loan. I can't underwrite or analyze the loan when I got financial statements that are three years old. A lot of bad things or good things could happen in the past two years. All, of course, bad because this is the buildup to the housing crisis. And even with three-year-old financial statements, this guy wasn't a good lending risk. And man, I don't know. There must have been. It was before my time. But the baby boomers must. I know they had colleges and universities and all that. They went to school. But there must have been a mutual, uh, like a, a trade school where, where baby boomer men learn to suck each other's dicks. Because that's all the bankers, and not just Zorba the Swede, but all these other predominantly baby boomer liars, frauds, fake rich men would do. That that stereotype, let's get business done on the golf course. Let's get business oh, oh, oh. Hey, JB. Hey, CL. Hey, AC. Hey, TM. Oh, 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 oh. Not if the debt to service coverage ratio says it. Ah. And yeah, that go? that's a movie. It's a stereotype like uh, Judge Smalls from uh, from uh, Caddyshack, although he had money. But it, it was like 85 percent true. It's like when I went to Wyoming, like, oh, my God, the flyover stereotypes are right. You guys don't have your teeth. And the sheep are scared, rightfully so. A little Wyoming culture there for you. <clears throat> And as I've said many times before, in my career, there are only two legitimately wealthy men. Neither of them drove luxury cars. One was a dentist. The other owned a shoe shop. That was it. Legit millionaires. One drove a Ford Ranger. I forgot what the other guy drove. Probably never even found out what he drove. They showed up. They weren't like, they certainly weren't wearing no medallions. All right. But here they were. And I was like 30 or 31 at the time. And I was getting to the point where like night clubbing was becoming a pain in the ass. I'm like, why is this guy who's legit 20, uh, twice my age, you still going to the nightclubs? You, you still going? I understand younger girls, but you, you, you're going to like party till 3 a.m. and get drunk. Don't you have a business to run? I know you got these assets out there. Like I got to inspect them. You're not even around to let me in to do the inspection. Because what? You're, you're partying like you're a frat boy? And then sure enough, the housing market came, crashed, and all these guys got wiped out. All of them. Some went to jail. But, you know, the shoe shop guy and the dentist, they're still going strong. I haven't seen them in decades. Well, not decades. 10, 15 years. It's been a while. <clears throat> but I'm sure they did just fine. But what shocked me most about that, and this is going on 15 years ago, I'm like, 
really? You're still doing the popularity game? Except instead of like working extra shifts or shoveling extra driveways to get yourself the latest Air Nike high tops or Air Jordans back in the day um, <clears throat> to go and pay for the high tops, these guys were buying, well, they weren't buying. They were borrowing money from the bank to buy things way more expensive than Nike high tops, namely luxury cars, boats, and McMansions. You want to see a great story? There's a guy that bumped off him and his own family once his his uh, Ponzi scheme of, I think it was a nursing website, that that went belly up. I'm not laughing at the family. I was tragic what he did it with the family, but it shows you how arrogant and, and just what cowards and pussies these weak men are, where it's like, dude, you should file for bankruptcy. Your kids and your wife had nothing to do. Oh, no. It, it, logically, you got to kill everybody because of the shame. You couldn't tolerate it. That's the type of vile, disgusting, evil people we are. But it's the same people who still think, oh, you got to have Nike high tops and do your hair a certain way. Otherwise, we're going to beat you up. Huh? You're not cool like us because you don't. your dad didn't buy you fancy cars or clothes. And I was shocked it didn't end. But this time, as they became adults, now they get the ability to sign legal documents and take money out at ultimately the taxpayer expense. Fast forward another, what would I have been? Eight, nine, not even 10 years. I ended up making friends with this guy over in a suburb, an elite suburb of a, of a Western Metro, major Western Metro. And this guy was incredibly intelligent. And he was also sometimes incredibly bored. And so we'd sit at his patio, have cigars, and we'd look. And this was like the movie studio for suburbanite setting. These were like, <clears throat> you didn't have real wealth. So you acted like you did. And you got a McMahon. Like, think McMansion Central. And again, like, it's in the movies. Ah, it ain't that bad. Nope. Because I got the inside baseball from this guy. First, you could just see it. Sitting on his patio, all these McMansions, all very nice. Way more housing than I'll ever need, or let alone if I don't care if I make a billion dollars, I'm not going to house that big. And those are the entry level ones. Well, then you go up on the rich. All oh, those are the more, those are 33% more expensive. But you could look down once, one way of the road, the other way of the road, <clears throat> and you'd see everybody's cars out in the parking lots. I look at my buddy, I'm like, why is everybody's cars in the parking lots? Not to mention some boats. And some four wheelers like razors. Look those up. <clears throat> you got yours in the in the garage. He says they're all showing off. I said, what do you mean they're showing off? They got to show off everybody. Like they got to show off the cars. I'm like you're kidding me. He's like no. And I started driving down. Now half half of these garages, if they were open, you'd see that an inordinate amount of crap. Because wifey poo just you just can't have enough crap. That's the point of living. It's a couch. It's Hey, more crap. Oh my God. I should give my husband a blow job or, you know, like lose the weight or, or go work out and exercise and spend time. I need crap. F the kids. Why spend time with them? We need more crap. Thank God there's a garage here. <clears throat> but then sometimes you drive by and the garage would have more than enough room for that brand new Mercedes or that brand new Beamer or that brand new SUV. But no. Tina had a park her Toyota Sequoia out in front or whatever the no Land Rover. That's Lexus, the Land Land Cruiser, Land Land Rovers. Well, whatever. Something because she had to mask the fact she had a worthless joke of a degree. That's just what I could visually ascertain. Then he starts giving me the inside baseball. He was bored. <clears throat> he was bored. And he found through some way he was able to look up, I guess it was public record in this state. He could find out what the mortgages were and, and the number of mortgages and their balances. And he found out that uh, all the people in it, all, not some, all, all the people in his neighborhood, it was him and the little retired lady across the street that didn't take out a second mortgage. They were still on the first mortgage. I think she had hers paid off, but she was a pensioner. And then he talked about all these people like, oh, yeah, refinance. Oh, yeah, second mortgage. Oh, yeah, third mortgage. But then then the, the numbers would be filled in with the backstory as he started talking to all these guys. And it was the same freaking story. They're all living paycheck to paycheck. Wifey Pooh wanted hot, what kitchen's done, 
bedrooms done, basements finished. We need a new this car. We need a new that car. Ooh, little Johnny is becoming 16. We have to get him a brand new car because it ain't like he's going to wrap that around a tree or a telephone pole on his first day. And all these people would talk to him and they confide in him like, man, I wish I was you because he was single. He, he Everyone kind of knew he was the bachelor. And he kind of kept his cards close, but, you know, he had this used car. I'm like, why don't you get a nicer car? I'm like, it's paid off. I wish I was like you. Wish I was like you, uh, the wife. And you could see it. Wives getting fat. And this was squarely my generation now. Maybe a touch younger. But squarely, you know, the graduating class of 92, 93, 94, early 90s. <clears throat> the Gen Xers you all hail and worship and think they know what they're doing. And I was like, wow. And, and what was worse, what was worse is these people would have been rich. They would have because they would bring home a quarter million as, as double income. But they just piss it all away to the point they'd be living paycheck to paycheck. And if they want to go get a car, they had to go on a vacation, or whatever, they just take a home equity loan out. And so the reason I'm pointing this out to all of you is to make you realize that nothing has changed since you left middle school. Nothing. The only difference is that now as adults, these people can borrow money to make it look like they're richer than they actually are. And because the value system that we instill on pretty much every young person in the United States today is one of status and materials of, oh, look at who they got. They got boats. They got rings. They got this. They got that. You think that's what you want? But it's not. Because in order to achieve that, there's two ways to do it. One, you be like a shoe guy. You have a shoe company or a dentist. You actually work hard and make the money and you save your money. And you don't drive a fancy car, by the way. Or you fake it. And as far as I can tell, nearly every American alive today is faking it. And the ones who get like a modicum of income, dead makes it look like you're way richer than you actually are. <clears throat> so if you get like a, a $70,000 a year uh, salary, you can make it look like you're a millionaire. Oh, yeah. I mean, you won't have a penny left to your name, but you can make it look like you're at least as long as the car lease runs. But what you don't see behind the scenes is Zorba the Swede going to jail for fraud and embezzlement. Well, not embezzlement, just fraud. I think it was tax evasion too. Um, you don't see these miserable, sappy, cookie, little suburbanite pansy fathers and husbands just slaving away. We like engineers, doctors sometimes even, general practitioners. And they still can't make enough to keep up with the Joneses. And is this nightmare level of debt slavery that just ruins their lives. And so let's say you're a poorer person or your culture don't come from the you're a black kid in the ghetto. All these rich white people in the suburb, they ain't rich. They just had more access to money. That's all. They had a better credit score. And even though you see it and it looks like that's great to me, you think you want that? Trust me, trust you, me, dude. You don't. You don't. Because I have seen dude bros and party people back from my 20s and my 30s. Like, oh, yeah, totally wiped out. Financial crisis took care of them. Now that I, I told the story about the guys wearing sunglasses indoors, all showed up in Beamers, all sales, bro. All tens on their arms. And now I know one guy's working for a moving company, like literally just moving furniture. Dude, bro, had glasses on, bro. Big nose, bro. Oh, no, Z. You got laid off. And oh, went bye-bye. <clears throat> oh, God, and I saw that in the crisis where we started repossessing. <laughs> you no better look on no better look on a person's face than the, the suburbanite queen, the suburbanite trophy wife who doesn't understand the basics of debits and credits and a balance sheet. Also, I'm like, yeah, the sheriff is kicking you out. Go get out of here. What? Because the husband never told. Or worse, like, why do you have a shotgun, honey? That's that tragic story over in the Lake Minnetonka in the Y-Zay, Zay, Zay. You don't want that life. 
And so my job, or it's not really my job, what I would like to do unto you is to give you a better value system, a better life philosophy, all right? One where it's not, like, really think about it, guys. Okay, first you want to buy all this crap when you're a little kid, right? Oh, the show, oh, G.I. Joe, I want that. Then what's the first thing they do to you when you get out of, out of high school? Hey, sign this school loan that you have absolutely no hope paying back because you're majoring in African-American studies or English or theater or something that has absolutely no job attached to it. <clears throat> And tell me how many of you young men are in this situation. You graduate, let's say, with even a good degree like accounting. You got student loan debt. You're an entry-level job. And now you already got to start competing with the bros who are a couple of years older than you got qualified for a lease. You don't know the difference between a lease at that time or actually buying cash. And neither do the girls they're dating. But you pull up with your you know, 10-year-old Ford Explorer and Thaddeus and Chad show up with their parents co-signed, co-leased. BMW or Beamer, the girls don't know. They don't know the finances of that guy behind them. So now you're still competing. Now there's this huge compunction for you to, no, <clears throat> no, middle school is over. High school is over. And if you don't quit this status seeking game, this materialism, you're going to ruin your life. Because these people that are now my age, half a century old, life is two thirds over. You got one period left for the Stanley Cup. All right. <clears throat> and these guys are getting divorced. They don't have a penny to their name. The wives hate them. The wives got fat. They nag all the time. Because Becky got the A10 and we only have an A8 Audi. What are you going to do? I need to get my master's degree. That's a nightmare you don't want to live. <clears throat> and so what I'm saying is forget that materialism. Forget that debt slave value system where you got to keep up with the Joneses and buy the stuff. And I'm saying one of simple freedom. I'm saying one of minimalism where you don't need the freaking money. Me and Modern Life, John, always go, we go at each other kind of joking. This hat is from Goodwill. Most of my clothes are from Goodwill. Uh, all my cars I buy used, if not outright salvaged. What else? I use, I play old console games. All right. Uh, I don't have a lot of nice things. I do have some, occasionally I have some nice, I have a Star Wars arcade game. That's kind of cool. Um, what else? I, I bought my, I bought a 1909 SVDB wheat penny. That's got, but I don't, just not buying a new car more than paid for all the nice things that I have just for once for not buying a new car once I paid for all the, the handful of the nice things I own in my life. Not a ton of nice, but they're nice enough for me, right? <clears throat> do you know what I get to do because I don't need the money? Do you know what the like? This is called the life of freedom. A couple of videos back, I, told, I sleep into whenever I want. It took a while to get here, but in not spending money and living in basements and buying used cars and not trying to keep up with Thaddeus or Chad or these small, you know, toothpick-sized dick dude bros left over still thinking it's 1989. And not trying to keep up with them. Now I'm the one that sleeps in. I go for hikes. Every day if I go to the gym. You guys see that. I don't know if you noticed that. That's one month. Over on my Instagram. I posted a picture of me after a workout. I'm finally I'm finally not sick. No holidays. Visit your brother. Visit you. Check it in. None of that. Like I had a whole month of freedom to go and work out at the gym and hit the trails six days a week. And then I can have my cigars. I can do this kind of thing. What time is it now? I got to go on with Chad. I get to go on with Chad at the Elkins Accounting Hour on his channel in 52 minutes. I could go and afford food. I don't worry. There's no worry. There's no pay. There's no like, God, I hope I make rent. I haven't worried about that since I was in my early 20s. And if I want to hop on a motorcycle right across the country, I can do it. Now, a lot of that is I work online, which is another advocation for you not to major in dumb crap and major in computer science or accounting or actuarial science or something. <laughs> but what sounds better to you? Living in the YZZ, Annie Dina, and Winnetka. So I can drive my Audi. Like, was middle school fun for any of you? Was that fun for any of you? <clears throat>
Or do you want to like, yeah, I make $50,000 a year. And the girls are like, Ew. yeah, but I make it myself and I work from home. And I don't have a mortgage and I don't have any expenses. So I actually save more money than your current boyfriend who's embezzling, stealing, frauding mon the money out of the bank. To keep up with to, to not only pay his car payment loans, but to pay for your student loans because he likes your hoo ha. <laughs> and frankly, that's about the only thing of value you got. You're you're pretty, you got a hoo ha, but your your journalism degree is not cutting it, sweetheart. You can have that guy's life for you, but I, I'm gonna go hike today. I'm gonna take the dog of no real value out. And the problem with value systems, like, I mean, especially if you start when you're two or three years old and they start getting that materialism in you, that envy. Oh, look at those people in the suburbs. Oh, look at Jeff Bezos. Oh, what would you do with $100 billion? Honest to God. You know what you could do with $100 billion? Same thing you could do with 50000 if you didn't take out car loans and major stupid crap and didn't have credit card debt. You could sleep in, have coffee till 9 a.m., go for hikes, go fishing and do whatever you wanted. <clears throat> And so, if you wanted to switch that life, you can do it. You just got to give up the spending. But I have a couple of products that help you make that transition. To help you get unaddicted to, oh, I got to keep up with the joint. And dude, this, this, the products I offer, like books and classes, of course, I'm going to promote minimalism, the, 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 the class. It's so sad to look at women uh, in these suburbs. There's I don't really market to women a lot because they they don't really have demand for my services. We do have a couple of gals that have taken the courses and, and so I'm I'm happy to have them. But there's a weird odd obsession. These girls have gotta be Queen B. Like they gotta they gotta be the prettiest girl in the nail salon. I've seen, I can't mention where, but I saw these rich gals drop their kids off at daycare or the schools, and then they just go bum around town. Yeah, you know, window shopping. It's like wow, you were window shopping yesterday. It's the same crap. But if they don't maintain that prestige and status, it's like they don't live. I don't know about you. I like to, you know, I'm not a girl, but if I was a woman, I'd be like, well, wouldn't it be much nicer? Like your husband comes and says, hop on the bike. We're going to go motorcycle across the country. You're like, darn right, sweetheart. And you pack your your mandatory things like heels and crotchless panties and you know, maybe a motorcycle jacket. I don't know. Maybe you want to, you get on and you go. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be more? No, no, it's the stuff, man. By that, by the time you're a 40 year old suburbanite, you know, aging trophy wife, your whole value system is cemented, uh, not pliable, not changeable to be materialist. You, you, you're, you're wedded to things and stuff and material and status. <clears throat> but for the guys, it's different. You can't overcome that. Like, dude, bro. I really want a Ferrari. Yeah, would you like that to go away so you don't want a Ferrari? Dude, bro, I, I need some slick, what is it, threads. What is it? Uh, Fresh bought me this pair of shoes I didn't want. They look like cut-up Nerf footballs. Uh, uh, Rolla was telling me they're $600 a pop. I'm like, $600 a pop? What? That's like most of my property taxes. What? Do you want to be liberated? You want to have this nice life where you're just like, hey, I do my thing. I don't worry about nothing. I drink my coffee. Or maybe, you, oh, my God, you know what you could do back when Cappy had his drink? You know what Cappy did? Whatever the hell he wanted. Hey, it's 10 a.m. I did all my work. and I'm going to start drinking Rumple Mints at 10 a.m. and play video games until 10 p.m. You can do it. And you know what? Didn't matter because the work got done. You still got paid, and your expenses were so low, you were never at threat of missing a payment on anything. And I don't know if you want 60 years of stress and financial worry and turmoil and all that, or you want freedom, but I'm going to advocate freedom. I'm going to advocate the freedom. And when all those cool kids, I've been tempted, they don't have 10-year, uh, 20, 30-year reunions at my high schools. <clears throat> but if I did, I was going to dress in the same nerdy clothes. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I don't work. Yeah, well, let me tell you why well, I just do this. Yeah, oh, that's nice. You're 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 the assistant vice president. That sounds like a lot of work at a commute and sitting in meetings and TPS. That just you know. Oh, I see your hot wife. Yes, 
Oh, what's your degree? Oh, liberal studies. Oh, good, good. I'm sure you're a contributing member to this family. No, I'm gonna I'm continuing gonna go ride down to Miami. You enjoy the snow. So link below are links to two courses, both offered through Teachable. One is achieving minimalism theory and practice. All right. How do you achieve minimalism? Well, you spend less than you make and you get rid of all of your expenses. That's the easy part, as I've said many times before. The hard part is undoing, deprogramming you from that traditional debt slave uh, uh, status-seeking mentality, that value system, to remove status as your value system and replacing it with freedom. Right. So if you're having trouble with spending... There's a reason for that, and this is, why I, this is why I charge so much on top of it because I'm greedy and I want as much money as possible. <clears throat> but if you're having trouble with that and you'd like to like wake up at 8.30 and have coffee and not care what other people think, may I recommend, since you've already dropped $50,000 on a joke of a degree, you go and – or maybe $50,000 on bailing out your, your wonderful wife out of her worthless degree at a private liberal arts college where she was just knew everything. Why don't you take a fraction of the average American car payment for one month and drop five hundred dollars? That's four fifty plus tax on achieving minimalism theory and practice. And if your car payment and your McMortgage payment and the second McMortgage payment and the third McMortgage payment and the wife's student loans and your student loans and the kids' hockey practice equipment and your daughter's ballerina thing, even though she ain't ever going to become a ballerina because she's fat as hell. If if, if uh, there's no money left over after that, you can't afford four, $500 uh, dollars with tax, even though you and your wife combined make $300,000 a year. I understand those things are very – wifey does need a brand new Range Rover. If you can't afford that, maybe you could afford the achieving financial excellence, which touches on some of these other key traits, although not as thoroughly as the minimalism one that you might like. That's only 99 bucks. That is also linked below. The minimalism course, which I strongly recommend you take if you want this nightmare to end, closes tomorrow at midnight. <clears throat> My time, Vegas time. Probably not Vegas time, but it'll probably be more like Central time because I don't want to stay up till midnight. Why? Because I'm getting to be an old man. I like to get my sleep. You know, I could sleep until noon every day if I wanted. <clears throat> All right, so you sign, don't, don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Go ask your wife for her permission to open up the purse and then she'll shift your little balls off to the side and she'll give you, you know, $500 for that minimalism course, even though it's your money. Right, And then maybe the nightmare ends and the financial stress goes away. Right? Well, I can guarantee you this. If you do what's in that course, you don't just take the course. You do what's in the course, the financial stress will go away. And then the freedom will start to appear slowly but surely. But then there's the other one, Achieving Financial Excellence, which, come on, man. <clears throat> Dude, bro, you got Beers and wings with the bros at the bar watching the game, bro. And you had to show and swing your big dick because oh, I got it, brothers. Sigma Sigma Phi. Remember the good times? You used to drink beer, but it was the same thing we're doing now, except we're fat now, not getting laid. All right, maybe you could afford that. You could, if you could afford the $99 to pay for everyone's light beer and wings, bro, you could afford the Achieving Financial Excellence class. And then for all the dude bros who are like, business, you're running your businesses and it's just a Ponzi scheme, getting new loans to cover your losses from the other company you run and you shift the money through. You don't need my course because I know you just guys are scam artists. You, you think you're going to get lucky, huh? You guys have no ability. So there you go. Don't be envious of these people. Absolutely not. Don't be envious of them. You should be envious of me. Oh, look at that skinny guy. I get to do whatever he wants. <clears throat> Have coffee. All right, let's go through the super chats real quick. Oop. Really? Really? Is the internet gonna go out on me now? Wow. I hate I hate the internet out here. Wholesome DJ Aftershock, five bucks. Gross point is old money. The actual analogy to Adina Wyzetta in Detroit is blooming Bloomfield Hills, Rochester. They vote way more to the right, however. Um, Idani is the old money. That's all washed up baby boomer women now. They were hot in the 80s. Uh, YZ is kind of the new money. Um, but it's very popular for Minnesota people to vote Democrat. 
Uh, you have to vote Democrat no matter what. Um, otherwise, you're not a true Minnesotan. Uh, <clears throat> Dino side, 13, 10 generous dollars. Thanks for your tour alcoholic video yesterday. Went to an AA meeting that night and realized I wasn't as lost as them. I just need discipline. No booze till my birthday, then none till July 4th. Dude, look, if you put the effort here, here's, let me tell you about AA. Just go to it regularly. All right. Not because there's necessarily anything magical about AA, but if you develop the habit, you go in there, uh, they, they read through the book. I don't know if they, if you went to one where they read through the book, <clears throat> just go do it. I know it's a pain in the ass. I know it may not become apparent, but just get into the habit and then you'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't really need the booze. Yo, you still want the booze. Don't get me wrong about that. But you'll you're like, oh, you, you'll see how it kind of kicks in. So at least do it for do it for a month. Go to four meetings, one a week for a month, and see if that doesn't result in you wanting to drink less. Wholesome DJ aftershock, two bucks. Minnesota has very few English descendant people. Explains that. Yeah, I, I'm. I know people kind of joke or, or they think I'm joking about the Scandinavian culture, uh, some German culture too. No. No, th this it's very real. It's it's in their um their constitution, the state constitution. Half the money of the of the budget has to be spent on education, and there is a self loathing aspect or component to Scandinavian or Scandinavian descendant culture. I would just call it Minnesota culture because they they are taught to hate themselves. <clears throat> Ms. Meg, five bucks. Never got the upper class lifestyle. Grew up in a small home and both parents drive used cars. Also was told things like, no, we're not buying that. Correct. Hold on, here, you want a real, I'll give you some insight. Just real quick shortcut. Here's a cappy life hack. You want to be richer than most rich people? Have good sex with good looking and in shape people. Be in shape. There, boom. I mean, have, have you seen Bill Gates? <laughs> I don't care how much money he's got. <laughs> I had a lot better sex. I just know it. Uh, wholesome DJ Aftershock, five, uh, $10. Minnesota has become a mental asylum under the new D trifecta with legal abortion until birth, driver's license plus health care for illegals, and redesigning the state flag all being passed. Good going, Sven. I, what's the new flag? What was it, some kind of laborer or something like that? I don't care. I, I, Minnesota. Just like San Francisco, the people deserve exactly what they get. They're absolutely going to get what deserve, what they deserve. Arkady, our Ashkenazi Jewish agent in the field for twenty five generous dollars. My friend showed me his Hinge message. Is that that's a dating app? Hinge messages, and many girls say I don't do coffee dates. No, no, they they want the money. They want money. They want dinner. Also, there are many articles online telling women not to go on coffee dates, but only dinner dates. How damaging is this in your view? Um, it's not damaging at all. Um, here, you all still think there's some hope. Like, look, look how you're viewing at this, Arcady. <clears throat> you're like, well, how do I get this girl to go out with me? I'm like, no. The the facts on the ground, the reality on the ground is that there are very few women worth dating. Again, if you don't believe me, go get my book, uh, the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women. All right. And this woman is already telling you. She's she's money. She is is um, uh, she's into fake things. She's not into character or or a quality personality. And right? I'm not saying yet that that women shouldn't expect a man to have a job. <clears throat> but there's these girls are immediately going for the money. And you're like, but how do I get her not to? No, you don't want her. You don't want to take this girl to coffee, period. It's self-selection out. What men have to do is realize that the selection is that poor right now. And to not have any expectations. Um, <clears throat> I mean, is it going to prevent some innocent, let's say there's some innocent girls who subscribe to, I don't know, Jezebel or Boldy or any one of the Condé Nast publications, any one of the modern day glamour magazine dating advice columns written by old Hagee women that hate themselves and don't want women to ever fall in love. Are there some innocent young girls who don't know any better and maybe don't think for themselves? And say, yeah, yeah, I, I am going to demand a dinner date. It's like, sweetheart, you're 18 and a 21-year-old boy just asked you out and he's going to school and he's he doesn't have the money to take you to dinner. 
he's a, a great man. He's got a good heart. He just doesn't have the money. Can you can you just sit down, everybody? Could you maybe even take him out because dad tossed you a couple bucks? How many times did that happen to me back in my day? <laughs> um, but aside from those handful of women that are that would maybe otherwise entertain that, no, it's it, it's that bad. What's wrong? There, guys, let's put on our thinking caps. What's wrong with a coffee date? She may not like you. You may not like her. Saves both you and her time. It's in her literal best interest. Why do they insist on a dinner date? Because they want the money or the free food. So, um, yeah, no, coffee dates. Drinks and coffee, man, perfectly fine. It's it, I, I don't know how much time I wasted going on dinner dates or Getting stood ups in there at dinner, you know, picking people up and not getting the phone call. Like, hey, are we still on for tonight? <clears throat> Robert Flores, 10 bucks. Aaron, I noticed some YouTube girls are abandoning their channels. Why? Because there's a cute girl inflation going on. Some of the girls are realizing that they can make money with a real job. What? Oh, okay. I, well, wherever wherever you're paid best, I don't I don't care. I mean, good good for them if there's more money to be made at real jobs or more money to be made on YouTube. I I don't begrudge women making as much money as possible. I absolutely go do it. Um, <clears throat> cute girl inflation. You mean that if they're cute, they can go make more money in the real world? That's kind of odd because it was women were realizing, well, I can make, you know, 40 grand as a teacher. I could show my my boobies on the Internet on OnlyFans and make, you know, 300,000. Again, I, I'm not I'm not even criticizing that. Like if you can make that kind of money showing your hoo-ha, go do it. Hey, I can make that. I'll go show my hoo-ha for 300 grand a year. There you go. <laughs> and then then people are like, oh, shame, shame. I just be counting my money like Bugs Bunny in that cartoon. Uh, well, whatever, what is, whatever is in women's best interest, I am not going to judge. Wholesome DJ Aftershock, two bucks. Also, Minnesota is mandated to go 100% green by 2040. Good for them. Good for them. Can't wait for all the, all those wonderful future Minnesotans to do that. They will be 100% green. Outstanding. I gotta, I definitely do have to find a new, new location. Bob, two bucks. Cappy, life is hard. Not everybody could be like you. Yep. Yep. Well, you don't understand, Aaron. Not everyone could be like you. It's like, yes, they can. If you are faced with starvation, cold, and hunger, and homelessness, they will become like me. It's just, they're just, it's such a lie for lazy people. We can't all be like you. By the way, can you pay more taxes to pay me on my student loans? Can't all be like you. You're, you're a different type of breed. You come from a different cloth. Nope. We are both made of iron and carbon. I just got my temperature up to the point that it forged and melted into the alloy of steel. You are still pig iron because you put no effort into getting to the hot enough temperature to turn yourself and galvanize yourself into steel. And yes, I am superior to you by every measure. You think you're better than me? It says every person who everyone is better than. Yes. Cabragoon Kenya, look at these the fancy donations. 20 generous dollars. Uh, things are not becoming dangerous. <clears throat> Kids are watching others online who appear to be doing better, and it's diminishing their feeling of self-worth. Seeing it firsthand with my kid. Guys, pay attention if you have kids. Take them off the internet. They're not watching the internet. Period. No TV, no internet. Not for my kids. And if I ever had daughters, they would get married at 37. <clears throat> Not that they'd have to get married. They, I wouldn't allow them to date until they're 37. Kidding. I, I, I'd, I'd be like, boy, would I watch those boys come in like a hawk? Like, hey, how you doing? I would purposely go and practice training marksmanship with a pistol. Because <clears throat> I'm a big intimidating guy. I'm like, come on, Alpac. I want to show you something. Like, there'd be like. You know, all these cans. Check this out. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Your head's a lot bigger than a can, isn't it? See if the kid stands up to me. I'm like, yeah, that'd be murder. <laughs> like, all right. You could take her out. Uh, a long story short, two bucks. Frugal pro tip. 
Look for estate sales. Yeah, uh, just went shopping at a at an antique place. I got an old Snoopy piggy bank. It's a clear glass piggy bank in the shape of Snoopy. I had one as a kid. Now I have it again. Oh my God! It sent me back fourteen dollars. Look out! There you go, Patrick. Yep, that's it. That's about that. That's as high as taste as guys ever get. That's about as high as taste as guys ever get. Boop, 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 Come on. Scrolling, there's more. I saw more. Don't want to miss people's super chats. Join me in 30 minutes at the Elkins Accounting Hour and sign up for that minimalism course. Do it now. Did anyone sign up for it? Man, how good of a salesman would I be? Did anyone sign up for anything? <clears throat> no, no one signed up for anything. Okay, that's fine. I'll buy tomorrow. Uh, Thomas Rao, five bucks. My comment last night about you being my friend if you were six inches taller was supposed to be a super chat. Also ended with an ample chested redhead. Yes, yes, I uh, I appreciate the compliment. Uh, ended with an ample chest. Oh, God. Take old bitty redheads. Nothing's better, man, for short-term relationships. I'm a redhead and I'm nice and stable. Bing, bing. We've heard rumors, but it's never been verified in the wild. Mark E. K. Five bucks. Hey, Cappy, your rants about Minnesota make it sound a lot like Michigan, though Michigan sounds more blue cut. Yeah, they, there's like real men still that kind of work in the industry uh, out there. There's like a little bit of the uh, auto industry left. Minnesota, it, I, I cannot imagine San Francisco with cold. That's kind of about it, but with a really weird cultural self loathing. Um, and a snooty arrogance that like you, you, how could I put it? They hate if you're a, like the Somalis are immigrating there, but any kind of non white, non native Minnesotan that is there, they get the worship and praise of every Minnesotan more than their kid. Then on policy, um, Minnesota parents, oh, I don't let my children, they're going to be woke and good Democrats and self-sacrificing where the community comes before the children. <clears throat> uh, but what that really is, is my politics come before my children. But then if anyone tries to, you know, uh, date or interact with their children, how can I put it? Unless you are a celebratory class, in which case you're just being used as an object to, to virtue signal on the internet, they absolutely hate you. So a paradox is anyone from Iowa, the Dakotas, Wisconsin, as it was in my case, if you come to that culture, they hate if if you're white, if you're white, they hate you. You're not in the clique, you're not in the club. Um, they just can't, they cannot virtue signal enough. They can't hate themselves enough and then loop you in like, look, hey. I'm not exactly like super proud about being white either. I just was born this way. It's not a thing to me, but I don't hate myself either. So I don't want to belong to your little Minnesota culture here. All right. <clears throat> just leave me the F alone. Oh, if you're a Republican, oh, ho, oh, oh. you're worse than Hitler himself. If you're a Republican in Minnesota, like why? Because I want to balance budget and low taxes. It's just a men and go there. It's just a mentally ill state. Very mentally ill. <clears throat> The more and more I'm away from it, the more and more I realize it. Uh, Duke of Hex, 100 Mexican pesos. Cappy, let me buy you a cup of coffee. Thank you, Duke of Hex. Thank you very much. That's a nice cup of coffee, too. I get uh, heavy cream braves because there's no carbs. Ironically, very little cholesterol, and but it gives you enough fat that you can run for a long time. Um, I've been working out, obviously, if you saw the picture. Um, and the diet is just as important as the gym. Dave128, remember, like us rule, no more than $40 on a day. Yeah, and even adjusting for inflation, that's more like 60 now. I wouldn't even do 40, guys. It's, it really is your time. I mean, if there's a really nice girl, you have a rapport, like you kind of like each other. But if it's online, no, online, you know, like, no, we're, we're mean for coffee. If for any other reason to see what you look like, you should even do a, a video chat before you go out with these people. You got to guard your time, guys. You got to guard your time. Uh, 
All right, I think that's all. Wait, wasn't there a twenty Cana a Canadian dollar one? Dave, one twenty two bucks. But Cappy, come Minnesota for the seasons. No, no, <clears throat> no. I've never seen a culture hate not only me individually, but just hate Americans so much. I think that's the best way to put it. Just, just a, a detestable group of self-loathing people. <clears throat> Anderson Paladin, five Canadian bucks, sending love from Canada. Please send help. Move. Come on down. You're in the next contestant of Refugee from Canada. Where was the 20 Canadian dollar? Oh, here it is. MP. Thank you, MP. 20 Canadian bucks. Have nothing to say. Thank you, though, very much. I mean, you could say something. Vlad Elkins is in the house. Let me make sure I didn't miss any. I'm sorry. I'm very thorough. I feel horrible if someone dropped $20, even if they were those funny... Uh, Loon dollars. Let me scroll down here. Boom, that's it. All right. Uh, I'll be on with Vlad here in about 25 minutes. We'll see you guys. Oh, 411 of you. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm at 97,600, but just so close to 100,000. I'll stop asking once we get to 100. I don't like asking, but please, for those of you here right now, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Toodles.